Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business. And we have something very special for you, our listeners today, with a training that we did recently on the Clubhouse platform. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Clubhouse, it is a social networking app where people create rooms and discuss a wide range of topics. And because it's delivered direct to your mobile device, you may notice a difference in audio quality, which we're hoping doesn't take away from your listening experience. What is important, of course, is the content that we're sharing. And I invite you to be intentional with what you wish to receive from listening today. How do you want to feel after you have listened to our session? For more information on how you can join us on future Clubhouse meetings with me, Louisa Havers, be sure to check out the show notes below and we will see you in the Clubhouse. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Infinite Prosperity podcast. And welcome to everyone who is joining us live on Clubhouse. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so they can live at their highest value. And I'm super excited to share with you our training this week on your brand's hero's journey. So join me as I discuss a key to unlocking your business expansion so that you can grow to six figures and beyond. And in this episode, we're talking about the key to building authentic relationships. And this is the, the first part of this is your own journey. So my intention is that you leave this episode confident to share your true self, your journey, the highlights, the lowlights, that you can build real relationships with your audience. So I just invite you to take a moment to consider what is your intention for joining us today, for listening? Do you want to listen to receive some inspiration? Do you want to receive an idea that you can take action on? What is your intention? Now, if you've been around me for a while, you know that I love Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. It's such a fantastic tool to use to see where you are at life and in business. Um, One of the things that I see all the time when I'm coaching my clients, whether it's through specific manifesting work in my energy alignment and manifesting programs, or if it's in my my business coaching mastermind program as, as well, is that where there is the greatest resistance is where the key is to unlocking the quantum leap. Does that resonate? I'm sure you've recognized that for yourself as well. And as Joseph Campbell puts it, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. It's so true. A huge welcome to those of you joining us on Clubhouse. And if you are enjoying our time together, do go ahead and ping five people and invite them to join us so that they can benefit from our time together as we dive into this. And all you need to do is you just hit the uh, plus sign at the bottom and you'll see who is live at this moment and you can invite them in. We'd love to welcome them in here. So it is our greatest resistance that in that lies the key to unlocking our evolution of our future self. And I know that anyone who has, excuse me, anyone who has been on their hero's journey, and we all have many of them throughout our lifetime, recognizes this within themselves. And if you're unfamiliar with the hero's journey, it's a structure that is in every brilliant story that has ever been written. And you are the author of your own story, and you are the author of your brand's story. You're the author of your wealth's wealth hero's journey, your relationships hero journey, your clients, of course, are the author of their hero's journey. And we go through a very specific sequence. It's a sequence of events that happens in the main character's life in the journey that they go through. So a quick recap for you on the stages. So there's 12 stages of the hero's journey. The first one is the ordinary world. This is the step that refers to the the normal life at the start of the journey before everything kicks off, before the adventure begins. Then the second step is we have the call to adventure. So this is where the hero is faced with something that makes him begin his adventure. This might be a problem or a challenge he needs to overcome. And then we move into the the refusal of the cause. This is where the resistance is bubbling up, where the hero attempts to refuse the adventure because, because of fear always stepping over that threshold fear kicks in and then we have 
the meeting with the mentor. So this is where the hero encounters someone who can give them advice and is ready to help them along the journey ahead. As they cross over that threshold, the hero is leaving his ordinary world for the first time and crosses the threshold into that adventure. And along the journey, we have tests, we meet new friends, we create enemies, and the hero is learning the rules of his new world. So during this time, he endures tests of strength of will, meets friends, comes face to face with foes. And then we move into the seventh step where we have a new approach where setbacks occur, sometimes maybe causing the hero to, to try something new. And this new approach or adopting new ideas is absolutely, absolutely key. And then we have step eight, which is the ordeal. So this is where the hero is going to experience a major hurdle or, or an obstacle. So this could be like a life crisis, could be a, a death crisis, something coming to an end. And as the hero of our story moves out of the ordeal, moves beyond the obstacle, they receive the reward that they've accomplished so that they can accomplish their goal. And then we have the road back. The, the hero begins his journey back to his ordinary life or what was his ordinary life. And along the way, the hero may face a final test where everything's at stake and he must use everything that he has learned. And then they, he returns with the elixir and the hero brings his knowledge or the elixir back to the ordinary world where he's able to apply it to help everyone else who remains there. And as I'm sure you recognize that every good story has these stages in it. You just need to look at Hollywood movies, for example, to see the flow. And I know that all entrepreneurs will recognize this journey. It's, it's not one that we just do once. It's something that we do countless times and we can have multiple journeys going along uh, the way at any one time. And some will last longer than others, of course. Now, here's the thing. Some of the most common pitfalls that I see that bubble up for people as we face our own story are we can contract and we can feel closed off. So we retreat because we might be afraid of what other people think. We're afraid to share who we really are. We're afraid of being visible. We're afraid of rejection. So many fears can bubble up as we're stepping over that, that threshold and we're going along on our journey. And here's the thing. When we're thinking about sharing our story, and our journey and what's happened along the way as we've stepped over that threshold. The more vulnerable that we're willing to be, the more powerful our story is and the more that we can connect with our audience on a deeper level. And this will really unlock your brand. So let's consider what your brand's hero journey is. It's going to be so helpful to do this. And this is why I wanted to share this because it's going to inspire you with ideas for you to share who you truly are so that you can show up powerful, you can build aligned, authentic relationships. I think for me, that's the most important thing in business so that we can really truly connect soul to soul with people. So let's just take a moment to connect with him before we start diving into your heroes, your brand's heroes journey. So we're gonna connect with all levels of our consciousness, connecting in with our higher self. I just invite you to breathe in for four, hold for four, and then to breathe out for eight. And we're going to do this together three times. And then we will complete our connection with an invocation. You're breathing in for four, hold for four, and breathing out for eight. Breathing in for four, hold for four. And breathing out for eight. Breathing in for four. Hold for four. And breathing out for eight. Speaking to all levels of my consciousness. And just allow these words and follow along with me to land in your field. I am setting the intention to create a clear channel of communication and manifestation. 
between my subconscious, conscious and superconscious. I am ensuring that my subconscious, conscious and superconscious are 100% connected and in perfect alignment and at all times working together in cooperation towards my highest path and purpose. Just taking a nice deep breath in and out. And from this space, I invite you to go back to the beginning when you first considered the idea for your business. What kinds of feelings were you having? What kinds of thoughts were you thinking? And let's dive into this. And I have a freebie for you at the end where you can grab a, a worksheet so you can do this in a work as an exercise. It's my gift to you to help you really connecting in with your story, your hero's journey, so that you can authentically share that with your clients and your community members, your audience, however you're growing your business. So we're starting off in the ordinary world. So I invite you to describe your life before you made the decision to follow your dreams. So for me, I was working in social services. I was leading multi-million pound businesses and developing and managing services for a range of things whilst I was there because I was there for 13 years. So I used to manage services for older people, managing care homes, home care, getting people out of hospital, preventing them from going into hospital. And then I moved into strategic planning and commissioning services, leading on complaints for social services and leading on community safety. So managing police officers and leading on things like developing services for those affected by domestic abuse, sexual abuse, preventing radicalization, drug and alcohol and so on. And I was working really hard and doing the whole corporate hamster wheel thing. So with more work being piled on and pay freezes, too much month at the end of the money. This was my ordinary world. And I had running alongside that the long term illness of my father before he passed away that really had given me that first call to adventure because my dad had missed out on doing all the things he really wanted to do in life that he said he was going to do when he retired. And of course, he was too ill to do it when he when he retired. So the call to adventure, what was the fear that you felt when everything inside of you was telling you that this was the one? That this is you got to get off, got to get off this wheel. So I had been thinking about this can't be, this can't be life, there's got to be another way. I was feeling like I was living to work. I'm just sharing my examples with you so you can draw out your own story. And so for me, I've been thinking, I want my own business. I don't, what can it be? So I was living in the energy of the question. And at that time, I was presented with a network marketing opportunity and I felt I jumped at it and I felt terror. I knew this was going to be my vehicle to change the whole corporate hamster wheel thing that I was on. But I was afraid of what people would think. What would all my colleagues think or my family think? What if I fail? Didn't know I was going on a number of heroes journeys at that point in time. And so, of course, it created this push pull. So this refusal of the call. So. How did you use the feelings, thoughts, and experiences to distract yourself from your calling? And it may not be exactly linear, like in a moment in time, you may have noticed this over a, pit, a number of, it could be years. So for me, I know that the refusal of the call went on for a while. Even though I knew this is what I really wanted to do, that I wanted my own business, I wanted to be coaching people. So I manifested a new job at work, of course, <laughs> so that I was really busy to focus on that. I was feeling like I can't really leave. I haven't got the money to leave, but not opening myself up to the possibility. I was feeling overwhelmed with everything. So I was using overwhelm to slow me down feeling very avoidant of anything to do with the new business, despite a full body, yes, dragging my feet. This is with the network marketing business. And then finally took that action step. And for me, that was setting me off onto the next part of my hero's journey, because as my income grew in my network marketing business, I was able to reduce my hours at work, which then opened up the possibility of launching my coaching business. And then we have the meeting of the mentor. 
So who was the catalyst that helped you break free from these fears? So that you could fully dedicate yourself to your dreams. As you're crossing the threshold. So what were the first steps that you took into your new world? What did it feel like to be taking those necessary steps? What did it feel like to be taking those necessary steps? I know for me, I my first mentor was a, a business coach because I needed to have some guidance around online marketing, sales. Those are the things I knew nothing about. So these are some of the things I needed to develop my skills around. And of course, is thinking about when you're learning new things, did it feel expansive? Did it feel scary? How did it feel? And then we have the tests, the allies and the enemies. So what types of feedback might you have encountered from your friends, your relatives, your colleagues? Was there anyone that inspired you? Was there anyone that made you question yourself and your ideas? I know from me, my mum, bless her, telling me constantly, I wish you'd go back and get a safe job. You had a good job. Why did you leave? You're so silly. <laughs> and of course, in those moments of where you're doubting yourself, it doesn't help to have people questioning that feeds off each other energetically, of course. So people who inspired me when I look back at that moment were my colleagues who were paving the way before me. That's why I love group coaching programs. So helpful. I love coaching them myself and I love evergreen programs so you can see the difference with people when they're implementing anyone who's further ahead as they implement things and you see them implementing that and the results that they're getting just as you're about to implement it gives you confidence faith certainty you've seen the success around you so important so that's why my business coaching program is evergreen for that reason, because you're inspired by being in a community with others taking action. You see your, you see your future self in them. Does that make sense? And then we have, as we move through all the tests, all the, the hurdles that are coming up, we get the opportunity to try a new approach. This is the way we're moving through the, the challenges and the struggles that may have made us question your path. So consider what challenges or struggles presented themselves in the beginning that made you question yourself or your new path. So for me, undoubtedly, that recognizing the, the, the change when I left my employed role to self-employed was the difference in having a completely new mindset as a self-employed person and then moving into a CEO of a coaching company. Again, a new mindset. I've gone from seeing myself as self-employed to running a company. Does that make sense? Very different mindset and energy. And along the way, what has been the biggest ordeal, the biggest obstacle, the lowest point in the journey? This is the, the key bit that's gonna really help you to connect with your audience and your community. We are able to be human, be vulnerable, because of course we all have low points along the way. And it's within those points where we often do a lot of learning. So to consider what's been your lowest point that you've faced within yourself when you've been implementing your business plan for your brand. So when I look back, I think my lowest point in implementing my business plan was what I call Facebook ad gate. <laughs> when all my eggs were in one basket, everything had been built around the model of running an evergreen webinar. So Facebook ad ever, evergreen webinar to a sales call model and then leading it, people into, for those that were ready and were an ideal client into a coaching program. So the focus was on sales into that program at that time. And then when Facebook changed its algorithm, the cost of ads went up extortionally and the quality of the accuracy of them attracting your ideal client went down at the time. And I know so many of my colleagues who had that model at that time that were burnt. My lowest point was when it felt like all the money was that was coming in was just 
draining out of the business because I'd wrapped, ramped up my ad spend to expand. I was spending 5K a month on ads. I'd hired two sales coaches to help do the breakthrough course. So I was training them. And anyone who knows anything about hiring, of course, it takes time for people to learn and grow within that role. And unfortunately, these ladies weren't aligned at the time, both really lovely souls. And I know they're flying with whatever they're, with what they're doing now, but it wasn't a fit. And so this had a huge expense to the business, creating a massive risk. So juggling things like bill payments and timescales, I knew I had to do something that, so that I could grow the business. And I felt completely out of alignment with my business model at that time. I was in that energy of pushing rather than listening to the intuitive voice within and had been speaking for a long while. And I knew I wanted to reach more people and actually keep the profit within the business. So I completely flipped my business model on its head. And this is what I coach my clients on now so that they can have the peace of mind, grow their business, keep profit, have a client pathway for their business, for their clients and for their business so that their business can take care of them. So as they're taking care of their business, their business can take care of them. I feel so passionate about helping people have the wealth and peace of mind that they crave. And it was from that moment, that dark night of the soul, that place where it was a massive obstacle um, with the Facebook ad gate, as I call it. And overcoming that obstacle, the obstacle became the way. So I know what it's like to be in that place when things haven't lined up financially and you're running your business. And I remember when I was tuning in at that time and my guides were saying I was going to coach people on abundance and on money. And I remember thinking how I'm not in the space of having done it. And they said, you will be. And they were right. I know that whenever I follow what my guides guide me to do, flow flows, always. So I invite you to think about what has been the biggest ordeal or obstacle along your journey as you've been implementing your business plan. What has been the learning from this that you can share so you can inspire others that may be on that same path or have experienced something that's similar along the way. But they also know that you're, you're human and that they can connect with you and your story. I hope that, hope that makes sense. So how can you feel aligned with being vulnerable? And then we move into, we've moved through the obstacle. The obstacle has become the way, as I always say. And we're then in that space where we're able to receive the reward. So what was it that helped you through this moment in time? Or who or what inspired you to stay focused on that path of your dream when perhaps everything around you wasn't quite looking so rosy? And then we have the road back. So after you've got back on track, how has your life changed? What lessons have you learned? So of course, for me, I've bought so many experiences and skills from, from all the training I've done, but also from all the mistakes that I've made along the way. I can bring that learning in so that my clients don't make those mistakes. that my hindsight can become my client's foresight. So I can share all this wisdom with my clients and help them to grow to multi six figures profitably. And then we have the next part, which is the resurrection here. So this is where the knowledge transfer occurs. So there is one more test of some sort that offers you the profound gift of insight that this was indeed the path you were destined to take. So this is your moment of truth on your journey. And it was in implementing my own manifesting techniques that I had learned through all the different modalities that I've learned, all the law of attraction and manifesting courses that I've taken, 
my hybrid of bringing all of this together that created quantum leaps in my results. And following the guidance of my Akashic record keepers. So of course, once we've got the knowledge, this is where we can return with the elixir. So what is the treasure you have to offer to your audience that no one else can? And this is you. What is, what is it about your life experience and brand? Makes you the one that your audience can connect with and listen to. So for me, when I'm mapping my own journey on the hero's journey model, as I've come back and I've returned with the elixir, so to speak, now I've served over 8,000 people. I get messages every day about the impact of my work. I have a multi six figure coaching business, a profitable one. And I'm going on my next hero's journey. I see them like wheels that we're continually going round and round. Every time we're saying we're stepping up to a new launching a new program, we're kind of going on lots of mini journeys along the way, if that makes sense. But I love this model because it enables us to really connect with and observe our behavior and to recognize that wherever that something is perhaps not aligned or we have a business challenge that pops up for like Facebook ads working and then suddenly them, them not working. There's always a solution. We've seen in the pandemic, people's business have been completely turned on their heads and so much creativity coming out of it. Some people have gone on perhaps a different journey that they weren't expecting, but they're on another hero's journey as they're finding their way. And they will have more insights. They'll move through the obstacles, come out the other side and return with the elixir so that they can help others. So as you consider your journey, consider what story can you share so that your prospective clients can understand and get to know you, to trust you. And when it's aligned, know that you're the person who is their mentor to guide them. It is in your hero's journey, your brand's hero's journey that you will connect and really unlock those authentic relationships, which is why I wanted to, to share this model with you today so you could start thinking about, okay, so what is my brand's hero's journey so that you can use this to help you to show up confidently, connecting with your audience as you continue to grow to your next level of success. So I'm looking forward to being inspired by your story as I get to know you. If you'd like to grab our free Your Brand's Heroes Journey worksheet, then we'll have a link for you in the show notes. And if you're listening live on Clubhouse, then just send me an email at louisa at louisahavers.com and we'll send you the registration link to you. All right, thank you so much, everybody who's joining us live today. I'm so looking forward to connecting with you again next time. If you have any ideas for future shows or topics that you'd love to hear me talk about, then just message me at louisa at louisahavers.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and appreciation for being part of our community and for all that you give to this world. Speak to you very soon. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.